That was The Clash right here on Real College Radio 91.3 with Mark Lane. Yes, this is Free Association, and I'll be coming at you until 6 o'clock on this Wednesday afternoon. We'll have us two hours of weekend here until 6 o'clock. Okay, let's go down. Let's go look at the headlines. We have to be informed, I guess. Oh, yeah, Queen Elizabeth uh, II, the Queen of England there, she's meeting with Obama or whatever, and so Obama told her that during one of the, you know, state events that he didn't nod off. And he also gave her an MP3 player, too. Well, okay. I, I, from MP3 three players and uh, DVDs, I guess those are presidential gifts now. Moms of multiples have depression risk. Yeah, here's why. Because then they're thinking, oh gosh, can you imagine when these uh, triplets are 16, they're all going to want to drive in the hormones and everything? Yeah, you'd be depressed too. Uh, don't believe everything you read today, but believe everything that I'm telling you. That, that's a headline here. I don't see what else is going on. Eh, who cares? All right, let's see. This is out of, the, out of BBC World News. You know, BBC News. Earth population exceeds limits. There are already too many people living on planet Earth, according to one of the most influential science advisors in the U.S. government. Okay, yeah. So, Dr. Nina Fedorov, a State Department official uh, who's been a science and technology advisor to the U.S. Secretary of State since 07. So she did Condi Rice, now she does Hillary Clinton. Uh, she says that, quote, we need to continue to decrease the growth rate of the global population. The planet can't support many more people. Uh, then, unquote, pressed on whether she thought the world population was simply too high, Dr. Fedorov replied, there are probably already too many people on the planet. And she was not including her in-laws. You know, populate, you know, those populations, oh, we're getting overpopulated or whatever, whatever. The only people that practice it, you know, to who make a big deal about it and, ah, we can't have too many kids, are the smart people with college degrees. So then who's, like, populating the earth? You see what I'm talking about? No wonder your professors have trouble with you. Uh, ah, this is out of the Politico. Uh, Tim Kaine, the, the Democratic National Chairman, uh, Democratic National Committee Chairman, uh, he infuriated his, his abortion backers in, uh, in Virginia. He's the governor of Virginia currently, Tim Kaine is. And he infuriated them by like signing a bill where the, they, where motorists could have a license plate that was anti-abortion. You know, it says "Choose Life" on it. They're getting all upset. Oh, it's just a license plate. What's the big deal? The revenue from the special ah revenue ah follow the dollars. Now we know why they're, why they're so upset here. Okay, so Planned Parenthood, you know they they lobbied Governor Kane. They told him what a bad idea and it, it is and everything. Uh, Kane, Kane defended the move by pointing out that Virginia has a long-standing program allowing customized plates and said that if Planned Parenthood applied for a plate, he would grant it. To request a plate, a group must get at least 350 people to pay, to prepay a fee of $25. Oh, I, I know in Arkansas they have the, the uh, Choose Life license plates. They have like, for the logo, uh, uh, children's hands or whatever. I wonder what they could put on the Planned Parenthood one. Margaret Sanger, a pair of scissors, I don't know, the pill, I don't know. Oh, college basketball, it's March Madness. John Calipari of the ex-Memphis coach accepts Kentucky's offer. Uh-oh, the SEC, the gap between the SEC and everybody else just got wider. Oh, this is interesting. Miss Universe visits Guantanamo Bay. Yeah, she did it as part of, you know, the USO to encourage the troops or, you know, I mean, that kind of thing. Uh, Dayana Mendoza from Venezuela. She went down to Guantanamo Bay to visit troops as part of the USO Armed Forces Entertainment Tour. And she wrote this in a blog and she said, We visited the detainees camps and we saw the jails where they shower, how the, they recreate... Yeah, how they rec... She misspelled something. Anyway, so she saw that they read books, they have art classes, movies, whatever. She said it was interesting. Uh, here we go. Out of Reuters... Bill O'Reilly is boycotting Sean Penn, Penn films. Now that's a headline. Now you read it, one, it, they show the interview, one, two, three, four, five, you go five questions down, then he says he's going to boycott Penn's films. And this is a question they ask. The Hollywood Reporter, okay. Are there actors whose political opinions disturb you so much you won't see their movies? And, and all he says was, 
just jumping now. I'm not taking the side of Bill O'Reilly by any means, but I'm just pointing out what the media will do to sell you a story. Five questions down, he just makes a comment, and then that's a headline. Well, okay, you know, that's the media for you. Why do you think I'm trying to get out of it, kind of? Oh, what else do they ask this guy here? What are your favorite movies? And Bill O'Reilly answers. The Godfather, Godfather Part Two, MASH, the original, the producers. I'm a big movie guy, and I'll give you the last word. Yeah. Uh, okay, what kind of TV shows do you watch, Bill? I don't watch a lot of TV, but I'd say 60 Minutes is the one I normally check in with, because Andy Rooney sure has some pithy comments. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there you go. Once again, Hollywood, Hollywood versus conservatives. Well, if you just want Hollywood and no conservatives, tune in to entertainment from 2 to 4 on Fridays on 91.3 Real College Radio. That was Catch a Fire with Mr. Flava right here on Real, Asso Real Association with Mark Lane. And I think now would be an appropriate time to do Campus Cognito. And joining me is Mike. Say hello, Mike. How's it going, everybody out there? Okay, so tell me, what brought you to RSU? What are you studying here? Well, I wanted to come to a four-year school so that I could get my degree in accounting. Uh, okay, so you basically want to be a CPA. That's your intentions. And, and when did you graduate? Um, I graduated in 06. Okay, so then that would make you like a junior? Actually, since I got sick uh, and I wasn't able to attend school for a full year, I'm actually still between my freshman and sophomore year. Uh, yeah. So, speaking of your sickness, uh, I've been around people, you know, talking with you about this interview, and when I've been around people, they come up and they've asked me, so, you know, I hate to play the bullseye on you, but how, how did he lose his leg? Did he lose it uh, in the war, or how did he lose it? So, you know, I mean, it's a question that people have when they see you. How did you lose your leg? Well, um, I ended up getting osteosarcoma, which is a form of bone cancer. And uh, they kind of gave me the option of life or limb, so easy yeah. decision. <laughs> I don't mind losing a leg to keep my life. Right, because it's kind of like what Sigmund Freud said, which was, and I mean it's easy to moralize like this without having to live it. You know, he said, if you have found out that you have awoken and you discover you have one arm and one leg, then crawl on one arm and one leg. And I guess that's what you had to do whenever they gave you the choice of life or limb. Yes, that's exactly what I had to do. Well, how does... I, this is kind of a delicate question, you know, because I don't want to put down the university or anything, but, you know, I have a handicapped relative, and I'm just curious, what do you think? How does RSU rate in terms of handicap accessibility? Well, most of the buildings that I'm in uh, are fairly well uh, handicap accessible. I've got elevators and things like that, so I really haven't noticed anything that I couldn't do. Uh, sometimes it takes a little longer. Maybe I have to do uh, extra things to get right. somewhere. But other than that, not bad. I mean, it's pretty good. It's pretty well accessible. Okay. That's good to, to hear because um, there's only one building here on campus that they that's not really handicap accessible. That's the Will Rogers Auditorium. And I, uh, I, I had a performance there one night and Unfortunately, you know, the relative couldn't make it for that reason. But um, getting back to you, how do you stay active uh, despite the missing leg? Well, um, I've actually been given a prosthetic, so from time to time I'm able to wear it. I'm still trying to learn how to use it and stuff like that. But uh, I still ride my motorcycle. Um, I like to hunt fish. Just normal things I don't mind I, I just I try not to let it hold me back right uh, it does slow me down but not necessarily stop right. me so it's not as if that you that you can no longer go forward you go forward but at a slower rate than you did before that's correct yeah 
And now, uh, I don't, uh, I don't mean to, you know, I am a cancer survivor myself, and, you know, people act like I know the meaning of life sometimes, and I don't mean to do this to you, but what, what good do you see? I mean, what, what keeps you going? Um, I don't know. Um, it's kind of personal now. It, I just want to do it now to just prove that I can get up and do it. Just right. continue you, on you through the wanna, day. You don't want to be a quitter like that Werther guy. Yeah. Yeah, what a quitter in my opinion. Well, Michael, I appreciate you being on Campus Cognito, and I hope that you've inspired some people with your testimony. Well, I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on.